Yo, Connor, we're back, baby. And we tell are me, so back. tell me, tell me that was not a bop right there. The feeding the ducks, as we like to call it. Feeding the ducks is it what it's called, and it's just Streamyard just going hard, just getting us ready, getting us in the mood for episode number one of Lefty Cards. Bam, 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 bam. Three rounds in the sports card strategy show heavyweight division. We got Connor Barnett in corner blue and Lefty McKee in, in corner red. I'm getting mixed up because it's so awesome and I'm having a great time. We've got live chat love. We've got Scott Lawrence. We got Janelle Shu, Rusty Emma Gart saying right now is a lefty sell. Ja uh, Janelle, man, I that's 10 days from now. We got a Yamamoto start to start baseball. Pitch number one. Barry Sif, my guy. Man, we're back. Ozzy, wow. Welcome back, lefty man. Welcome back, Ozzy. I love my conversation with Ozzy at the, at the National last year. Wow. These people are back connor the lefty mckee is back in the saddle if you will but we can't go any further without our first ad read so let's get it going a free 30-day trial membership at nooffseason.com gives you a friday edition of the sports card strategy show called the overflow show it's a premium podcast for members only every Friday, and you can ask an unlimited amount of questions to build your sports card investment portfolio. And if that's not enough reason to sign up for a 30-day free trial, you get free. Sorry, you do not get free. You get sports card school and tons of premium members only articles. Sign up today at nooffseason.com. Nooffseason.com, the sports card strategy show, sports card network, and I have been grinding. We've got Paul Hickey that has been like putting me in a crucible just ready to go. Man, I've been I've been in what you call like I don't know if any of you guys watch Dragon Ball Z, but I did a ton growing up. And there was a moment where Goku goes to the hyperbolic time chamber to train, to get jacked. And that's when he comes back as Super Saiyan Goku, and he comes back alive. So you're about to see Super Saiyan Lefty McKee coming back from the hyperbolic time chamber. And we're back, ladies and gentlemen. We're on YouTube and Twitch primarily. They will be podcasts on Spotify as well. They will be all, yes, nerd alert, Rusty Immigard, absolutely correct. I'm a nerd not only in sports cards. I can do TCG as well. So we might pop up TCG cards here on the Lefty Card Show. Who knows? But for the first few minutes, we want to talk about the narrative of the time away. You guys have been wondering. Everybody's been asking, what have we been doing? What have we been building? This right here is what we've been building. Connor and Paul and I have just been grinding, getting a show off the ground, having uh, YouTube's launched and YouTube's deactivated. <laughs> YouTube just does not like the Lefty McGee, Lefty Cards branding, apparently. But man, I've just been sowing time away for a moment like this that we would blow up and that we would have people just coming in in droves to learn about baseball, soccer, basketball, football. We're just going to talk cards in a completely new way here. Very low-key, very front and friendly. And Connor, my man, is going to be with me once a month. So Connor Barnett, take it away. Bro, what have you been doing over the last couple of months? Let's go. First off, I'm hyped to be here. It's good to be back on a show with Lefty. Obviously, we had our deep dives going for a while. Uh, that were a lot of fun and now uh getting lefty at the helm uh where we get full personality lefty and like you mentioned we're gonna be real laid back knocking out some topics bringing up cards bringing up events keeping you guys up to date and having a good time with you guys in the live chat uh if you guys keep up with the sports card strategy show or you're a premium member at nooffseason.com you know i've been in the lab 
the lab yeah. coat has been on. I've been yeah. grinding. So uh, I'm excited to to get this episode uh, aired and pumped to be back with Lefty McKee, baby. Yeah, man, it's so cool. Uh, Connor and I have had multiple phone calls and multiple uh, Zooms and all this kind of stuff, getting this ready, getting this grinded. And I thought no better way to launch Lefty Cards than to have a beautiful, familiar mustache across across StreamYard from myself as we have Connor bringing it strong. There's been so many nicknames thrown out here, Connor. Do you have a card nickname yet? Or are you still just Connor? I think I think I'm uh, passively fading the unicorn nickname just because it's not my favorite. <laughs> it's not my favorite, but uh, I'm hanging tight until until I get one I think that really rings the bell. Passively you know, so fading. We'll, right. we'll wait and see. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Hey, while we have a second, I do want to address this, Barry. Um, I. Unfortunately, our adoption did not go through in December. Um, I don't want to start this show on a on a negative note, but I have been um, away for a while to kind of just recuperate. Our adoption did not go through. Our birth mother, uh, she did not end up uh, placing the child with us after walking with her for seven months. Very tough time for me and my family. So if you guys are praying, people, would you continue to put us in your uh, your thoughts and prayers. We love having our community here. We are still in the adoption process. We are back on the grind in that way as well. Katie and I um, have just been kind of hiding away, protecting our family. And that's also been part of the absence as well is me just uh, is just being able to come uh, before all of this and get all of this out of the way and say, am I ready to get back at it? And as of March 11th, 2024, I'm back and ready to go back in the saddle. So thanks for asking, Barry. We do. We would love your prayers and everything. Um, we love the fact that our community knows that this is about us, but it is the truth. We just haven't had a child come our way yet, and we're still expectant and uh, ready to uh, have one. So if you guys know anybody that needs uh, a helping family home, we would love to be there. So thanks, Barry. Anyway. Back on the Sports Card Strategy Show grind. Thank you for sending love and care. I love all of you guys. Thank you for the love. I've felt it. Um, but, Connor, we want to talk about um, your golf game real quick. Oh, God. A couple of weeks it ago, you took a hiatus from, uh, from, uh, from work to play a billion and a half holes of golf. How did that go? I actually, yeah. Uh, the breakdown isn't as ideal. You know, we might, we're, we're going back to back negatives here, but, um, so <laughs> got to Myrtle beach, but we have this huge group. Um, it's like 80 guys. Um, I don't oh know gosh. everybody, but it's just been accumulated throughout the years. Fortunately, we were able to get the invite last year. Um, so this was our second year going this year, uh, on like day two, one of our buddies, I'm not even, well, his name's Cameron. One of our buddies named Cameron, uh, is not feeling well. I happen to be riding with him for the first two days. Next thing I know, it's like day three or four and I am uh just not alive as a human being completely not alive so like the second half of the trip i just laid in a bed oh, um no yeah i know but uh fortunately the first half i won uh i actually won the money like every day for the first three days come on connor and then uh not necessarily having the best score but just the best teams and things that i got placed on i got fortunate to win some money before i was absolutely knocked out for the second half of the trip but either way uh came back refreshed we're working on great things at nooffseason.com obviously and like i mentioned i'm freaking pumped to be here we got some good stuff to get into today, and I'm excited. Well, that's awesome, dude. Uh, let me let's talk about the cheddar real quick. Not only the cheddar from your from your golf game, but we're talking about selling season. It is March. March is my favorite month in sports cards because it's the month over the history of the last three years. If I look at my uh, my selling history, it is the month where I have made incredible gains in sports cards. It's always been my biggest month, particularly because my largest portfolio or my portfolio largely holds mostly baseball cards. But there's a good selling season for a lot of ba uh, a lot of cards in general, because you've got people that have bought in December or maybe have had accumulated cards all off season and things like that. There's not really football going on. Basketball is in a. Uh, what I call a lull at the moment is like the pre-playoff, like post all-star pre-playoff lull. And so there's just a lot of good opportunities to find good deals in some sports and then buy or sell opportunities on this, the particular sports that I'm involved in. So selling season right now for me, 
March is one of my favorite seasons. Typically, I turn almost 80% of my portfolio completely over in March, and I have like massive financial gains that I end up uh, like sprinkling throughout the summer and then end up having spending all of the rest of my bankroll in July at the National. And then I kind of slowly buy sell in the uh, in the fall and autumn, uh, all, the fall season into the early winter. And then I sell uh, and then I buy big in December. So that's kind of how I go. I sell big in March and then I trickle, uh, sell big in July, trickle, and then I buy big in December and I buy big in September. So that's uh, kind of where I'm at. So currently it is selling season because as Janelle Shu uh, so incredibly articulated, we are 10 days away from Yamamoto throwing the first pitch in the MLB season. That's crazy, Connor. That's crazy. We're 10 days away. 21st being the first day of the games. That's so early. How are you yeah. feeling about that? I'm excited. And Lefty, not only are we 10 days away from Yamamoto, Yamamoto's first pitch, we are now uh, three days away from the spring breakout prospect game starting 14th oh, through the 17th yeah. of March. Let's go. That's so we got more good... exciting stuff there. Yeah. And then also it's a good – when did the Masters start? Uh, it'll be the first weekend of April. So that's also a good selling season for me because, as you guys know, I I, uh, I – solo buy that 2001 tiger woods card and so i probably will sell all of them right appearing right before the masters assuming he's healthy and he's going to play at the masters which as far as i know he is healthy so now would be the time that connor would say no he's not okay uh, he, he <laughs> yeah he's fine he's fine uh Good. i just wanted to correct myself on the dates real quick uh april 8th through the 14th uh will be the Masters. so it's actually i guess the second or third weekend but uh for the tiger reference real quick um yeah he did end up uh, uh, not DQing, but uh, backing out of the last tournament he played in. However, it wasn't because of injury; it was because of illness. So, uh, much like myself on my golf trip, Tiger Woods was feeling under the weather when he was playing golf. So, hopefully, he's coming back ready for Augusta, and that'll be a good sell marker for you to capitalize uh, on yeah. some gains there. Yeah, we've been buying these uh, 2001 Tiger Woods cards for the last um, probably six months, as they've been fairly low. And then this 2001 Upper Deck Rookie is the card we're speaking on. If you're lucky enough uh, to find some PSA 10s, as I was, uh, those those should be good profit points for you. As well as we do get down to the end of the NBA season pretty fairly soon. And it's March Madness. So there's just so much going on. Uh, usually March Madness doesn't have that much card uh, stuff on the table. But this year, it does. Because... Our good, our good uh, investment, Caitlin Clark, is going bananas. And so if you guys bought into Caitlin Clark, um, this tournament is going to be a great time to sell her. I actually think that my, my favorite sell opportunity will be um, right before the NCAA tournament in the Big Ten tournament for her because I believe she will go off there. I believe you'll list there, make a high – um, there will be a lot of transactions of hers in that season. And so uh, that is where I'm looking forward to as well. So um, the baseball guys that I'm selling, I've had a lot of people ask, since it is sell season, are you selling everything or is there any guys you're holding back? So I wanted to address that real quick, Connor. Who I'm selling right now, uh, way to go, Janelle. Uh, there's been so many gains along the way for, for Caitlin Clark, but who I'm selling right now in baseball world is I'm selling Wyatt Langford. And I got to beat this drum for a second. This guy is going crazy. He's a guy like people are comparing this guy to Mike Trout on Twitter. It's kind of crazy that I th I'm, I'm not really ready to go there, but when you see the body and the profile that he has and like what he's doing in spring training as just a young kid, this guy's going to go pretty bananas. So, um, and then, so as we go towards Wyatt Langford, I am still selling some of him now. I'm selling everything but one auto for Wyatt Langford because I do want to hold out because I had so much of a position in him. I'm going to sell a lot of my position over the next couple of weeks, especially um, he's not going to be in that game in three days because he is more than likely going to make the Rangers uh, team straight out of spring training. So they're going to hold him up, um, out from that. There are going to be some of those big names that are not going to be playing in the showcase game uh, or the showcase games. But then Wyatt Langford is going to be on this Rangers team. And I don't think it's even close about him not making it. So 
I'm going to hold out one auto and the, everything else I'm going to sell. Um, Jackson Churio, I am selling. He's had a really hot spring. Um, along with Tyler Black and a bunch of other guys, I'm going to get rid of my Brewers. Um, Jace Young, I'm actually going to get rid of. I know he might not make the the Tigers roster right now, but I do want to get rid of him and potentially buy him back if he does not make the roster of the opening day. Speaking of Tigers, I am holding on to Colt Keith for now. He has been a little bit dinged up, and I want to make sure that he when he's going to make the club, if he gets held out from that original like if I hear murmurings coming of him going to make that roster, I am going to sell him. Same with Jackson Holiday. Jackson Holiday laced a left on left grand slam last night, and that was kind of the first thing. Is like, okay, Jackson, he's ready to ball. But I definitely want to make sure he's going to make that. The Orioles have can move slow with him. I want to make sure, so I'm holding on to him. I am uh, I'm coming off of some of my position on Xavier Isaac. I am keeping most of it for the long term. But I will uh, sell some of my Xavier Isaacs. I just actually listed a good portion of my slabs today. Um, probably about 50% of my Xavier Isaac position I did move out of because he is a longer track guy. I want to be able to have some funds uh, to, to recoup some of that. So those are who the baseball guys that I'm currently selling. There are, of course, a number of guys that are on uh, the list at nooffseason.com in terms of you could have bought and sold. So if you have questions on specific guys, if I'm buying and selling right now, go ahead and drop them in the chat. We will get to that live chat. But those are the big names on like Lefty. Are you buying? Are you selling right now? Um, are you holding some of these guys? So big sales right now. Wyatt Langford, Jackson Churio, Jace Young, and some of my Xavier Isaac position. I am currently holding on Jackson Holland and Colt Keith until I find out if they are going to make the roster or not. And then there are some guys like Roman Anthony that I'm completely holding on because their runway is a lot longer than some of the other guys that we have in our portfolio. So Wyatt Langford is up 30 to 40%. I'm selling all of his autos. Please take a victory lap with me. And uh, that was my little victory lap. Did you like that, Connor? I and, did like that. Uh, did you actually get in on any of that Wyatt Langford love? Not too much length for it on my end, no, but uh, definitely been tracking our prospects. We've been ready to fly out those sell alerts all week. Dude's a freaking stud, man. Like he's he he's blown me away from what my expe expectations were for him. And my expectations were pretty lofty. So <laughs> he's I think he's probably going to win rookie of the year. And that's saying a lot considering his teammate Evan Carter is also extremely good. I would expect one of those two guys from the Rangers uh, to win rookie of the year and uh and go just all in on those two guys so um let's see um okay so connor i do want to talk about now we've talked about a sell season but i always like to know who people are buying i know you've got you've been talking quite a bit with paul you've watched a lot of his shows and stuff um and so you you've kind of got a pulse for where the market's at other than baseball so connor who are you buying yeah, I think right now we're – it's a little bit tricky right now, to be honest, but I think that football we're kind of at a good spot to buy, but specifically guys that aren't coming across the news. So obviously we had a bunch of uh, trade-related and signing-related news today coming out of the NFL, Russell Wilson moving, Saquon Barkley moving, DeAndre Swift, all these names. that I talked about some of them earlier on the Sports Card Strategy Show, but um, we want to stay away from those guys, right, because their name being in the media is kind of creating hype yeah. around them. The prices are going up. However, there are several names that aren't being talked about a ton, uh, that I think have some serious upside. So I'm going to start off. Uh, I'm looking at Tua right now. He's undervalued in a lot of areas. I'm looking at this Optic Hollow uh, and PSA 10 lefty. It's down 18% over the last 90 days. Cool. Uh, and that's uh, that's 110 sales. Uh, so that's a lot of sales data to go off there. Um, this is card was trading around 250 bucks in September and October. Um, average of $136 trading over the last 30 days. So basically half the cost there. So I think if you can get in this card uh, somewhere between that 125, 150 range, uh, you're kind of locking yourself in for profits. I think by now, and then you have several sell markers used. You know, we talk sell markers a lot, uh, kind of depending on your desired return on investment and your, your risk tolerance, right? So you got an FL hype cycle, uh, performance-based sell markers, if you want to wait on those, or even a playoff push, depending on uh, just how much upside you're trying to squeeze out of that Tua card. What are your thoughts there? Yeah, I think I I want to love Tua. Like I want and I want to love the investment of Tua, but I got to I got to tell a little bit of a narrative here of why I hold back on Tua and it's sure. really only one reason because I've been burned by a Tua investment previously. 
um, that first year that he was in the NFL, that 2020, 2021 going into that season, I bought really, really heavy into Tua. Like he was my biggest investment in my portfolio in 2021. And that was the year where the, not only did the, not only did he not do well, but the market fell too. So like my investments just got crushed into it. And I ended up having to like sell off what I had in him and like took like a 60% loss. And so it was like really, really tough for me. So when I look at Tua, I'm just like, oh God, it's kind of like emotions of what that previous like, uh, like boof was. But at the same time, I think Tua does have position to be able to go and do some good things in, in 2024. I think, if they can take another step forward, this team is ready to be a deep playoff run. I think we've seen how they can compete on a big time level with the Bills and players like that, players with what's going on. Um, I think that he is able, especially if he is able to bring in any sort of other help around him on that line or anything, then he is going to be as good as advertised, especially another year further out from that big head injury and some of those other injuries that he's dealing with. I think if we can seek to a, be consistent, this is a great look at a, uh, a buy low opportunity. Yeah, good analysis. I, I think I'm pretty much on the same page with you. And I, I just think right now, and again, I mentioned kind of you take your pick at sell markers just depending on how much tolerance you have, right? So for me, I'd probably be looking at listing prior to the NFL season starting, yeah. uh, just like using that hype-induced marker so that I don't have to really worry about performance hikes. But uh, like you're mentioning, there's a lot of good things happening uh, in Miami right now. I love Mike McDaniel at the helm. Yeah. Um, obviously, Tyree Kill, Jalen Waddle, so many good pieces around there. And Another year, like you're saying, for two, another healthy year. He had a good, healthy year last year for the most part. Um, it seems to be continuing to mature as a quarterback. So uh, I think I'm excited to see how Tua does. Obviously, uh, I mentioned performance-based markers, too. I mean, they put up 70 in a game last year, and I wouldn't be surprised if they did something uh, similar in this upcoming season. So uh, excited to see what Tua can do there. Yeah, I think another season uh, with McDaniel being able to fit all this speed in one lineup, I mean – Every time the Dolphins are on national television, they talk about how they have track star speed all over the field. And you know they're going to make good drafts as well this year. So that's just going to be fun to watch, man. Um, that's going to be fun to to do. So who's your second one? I know you got another one here, so let's talk about who's second. We don't talk skill position guys quite enough, in my opinion. I know Andy Kaysen from Football Card Quest loves his skill position guys. I'm looking at Garrett Wilson, Lefty McKee. His 2022 Don Russ downtown. It's a super short print, down 43% over the last 60 days. Uh, last sales in order: 425, 435, and then 325, which is that most recent sale. Uh, you know, last year was without. It was Aaron Rodgersless, if you will, and he still managed to have 95 catches for over a thousand yards. I think the Jets are going to be legit this year. I think the defense is legit. I think Brees Hall's legit. I think Aaron Rodgers is going to have a good year. They're going to be a heavily hyped team, big market team. Lefty, I think this card could easily 2x if you can get it kind of closer to that 325 comp rather than that 430 comp. Yeah. Um, just, I mean, I'm really high on Garrett Wilson and all the things he can do. He's extremely talented. And then if you throw Aaron Rodgers into the mix and Aaron Rodgers comes back healthy, uh, could be an explosive year for Garrett Wilson. Oh, absolutely. Garrett Wilson is a baller. And, and, and I had talked about, uh, I had texted, um, Paul the other day saying, yeah, I know you, I know you hate, uh, Aaron Rodgers, but I know you love money. And I think that he could be making some decent money if you buy in this off season with him, because people aren't expecting much, you know, like I know that he, Aaron is expecting much, but I don't think all of us are expecting much from Aaron Rodgers as a 41 year old, 40, 41 year old quarterback, but he's got weapons. He really does. And Garrett Wilson at an all time sell low of $325 on a downtown card, PSA 10 already graded. Like that is, that's an incredible buy. Um, good looks right here, Connor. Like there's not even the closest sell was during the season when the Jets were freaking horrible. And the closest sale was $375. So you take $50 off the, the next closest, and then you give me that PSA 10, I'm taking it all the way to the bank. And I'm probably selling this one during preseason hype as well, considering we probably will see a lot of Jets attention because of Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, I think that's why I liked... I think that's why I picked both these picks. You mentioned you could sell this during the preseason. I think both picks really just have a number of sell markers. You know, everyone's 
everyone's in this for different reasons. Like some people enjoy the risk of the hobby, right? Some people just enjoy exposing themselves to more risk so that they could have more upside. Some people are more cautious, like uh, like us on the sports card strategy show. So either way, everyone kind of has their why. Uh, they're in the hobby. They have their own strategies. We try to uh, pitch kind of being uh, more risk averse. However, if you're someone that wants to be in the hobby that likes taking the risk, I think that um, these cards just fit every genre, right? Every every type of style. It's either if you want to be risk averse, you can sell early before the season, or if you're someone that wants to wait for hoping for a playoff push or even a performance based marker, uh, these cards could really two x. So uh, yeah. excited and glad that you were on a similar page as me. Yeah, I love. I mean, hey, when you're when you're buying at an all time low of a PSA ten on a team that has a lot of upside. I think those are great markers like check, check, check for you to be able to make some profit. And if you guys are wondering what app we're using on the screen, for those of you that are watching on YouTube and Twitch, we use all of our market data from marketmovers.com. If you type in market movers as the uh, as the code at checkout, you save 20 percent after a free 14 day trial. Visit marketmoversapp.com and use the promo code no off season that the promo code actually is no off season. I, I, I misspoke at the very beginning saying the promo code was market movers that wouldn't make any sense if market movers promo code was market movers that is a uh, that's deep cut right there but it's no off season get yourself 20 percent off in a 14 day free trial for what i would consider the most useful and best um charting data and card following uh app in the business so all right let's go ahead and move on to what i uh love to call the deep cuts for each sport. We're going to make this a, a regular part of the lefty card show because a ton of times people come to me and they say, yeah, I've got the big guys. We talk about the big guys a lot. Who's next in line that I could potentially spray a 10 or $15 uh, auto price or something just smaller than, than what we've talked about uh, before. Where are the deep cuts at lefty? So I'm going to give a deep cut for basketball, football, baseball, and soccer on every episode, Connor. Every episode, we're going to give a deep cut. And so today, I've got you running football and basketball deep cuts. Why don't you give us the first one? I wanted to say real quick, I'm excited for this segment because I think there's a lot of people in the hobby, myself included, that really like looking at stuff that maybe has high upside, even if it's more of what we would consider like a flyer type play lefty. So I think this is a good segment. I'm also, I'm going to pass the baton right back to you. Uh, <laughs> just since I rattled off a couple of names there, I think the audience uh, is excited to hear kind of what, what research you've come up with, and then I'll be ready to roll once you're done. All right. That's fair, dude. Okay. So the name that I'm going to go to first is I'm going to go to a guy who's actually not cheap, but is cheap compared to where I believe he will be in a couple of weeks. And we are talking about the all important Sam Basalo right now. Samuel Basalo is another, yet another uh, Orioles prospect that is going to explode onto the scene over the next couple of months. And when he came out uh, of this 2023 Bowman Chrome set, the card launched at $250 at its first sale. And it is at $295 right now. He's had an 18% rise, and all he has done is destroy pitching in the minor leagues. This kid has gone absolutely nuclear. So Samuel Basalo is my deep cut and a guy that we need to be paying attention to because if you can get into him and his cards at $295 right now, the average all time is 280. So you're right around the average expense of what this card is. And he is playing very, very well. And even um, last year in 2023 in his double A, which double A we talk about is the first level of professional pitching. He went from high A to double A last year and had a two, uh, WRC plus of 220. And yes, it was only uh, 16 plate appearances. But when you see him at high A, he had 195 WRC plus and destroyed pitching at high A. This guy is easily primed to be one of the top five uh, prospects in baseball once this next class moves on when Ch uh, holiday and churio and wyatt and all them move on to the mlb and we are looking for the what's next basalo is number one on my list for the what next guys and i would put him over guys like xavier isaac i would put him over guys like roman anthony basalo is the kind of guy that is going to change a franchise 
and the uh, Orioles don't have positional eligibility technically for him. They're not going to put him in there over Adley Rushman. So I think that he will be a part of a big trade this uh, this July when the Orioles make a big move for another guy like Corbin Burns into their um, into their starting profile when they are making a big, big push at winning the AL East. So Basalo, I think, will have a big rise in the middle of the summer because I project him to be traded um, this year to a team and probably become their number one prospect. I love this lefty. I'm, I I was looking at Basalo's number the other, numbers the other day, actually, and I love that you have your the fantastic advanced stats. I'm going to rattle off some not advanced for those of us. Uh, myself included that comprehend them just a little bit better so we cover the spectrum here but uh in 2023 in the minors uh, he's just such a complete player it seems like lefty you know uh hit 313 in 2023 with 20 homers as a catcher still stole 12 bases uh batted in 86 guys he kind of reminds me frame wise not looks wise but frame wise of a young joe mauer i think he's like mm. six four ish that's lefty um, so, I mean, he's just an exciting name for me. And like you're saying, that was a good point you're putting out, you're, uh, putting out there. They're not going to – they've got Adley, right? So he's going to be on the move somewhere. They're going to find a way to get pieces for him there, and that could be an exciting sell market to kind of boost his, 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 uh, his prices right there. Yeah, he is 6'3", 180 currently. So he's 6'3", 180. You know what that spells to me? That spells that there's more power coming to me because no one is going to be 6'3", 180 when they're not – when they're 19 so he's 19 years old no one at 25 is going to be 6'3 180 if they're playing catcher he's going to put on some pounds and whether he's playing catcher or first base this guy's bat will profile all over the field he probably could he could dh they maybe corner outfield spot him i don't know how athletic he is in the field i haven't gotten a whole lot of eyes on his fielding capabilities but what i do know is this guy can rake so that's my baseball deep cut and as mark drasinski says right here shh He's the best kept secret in the hobby right now because when you can get him at $295 for a base PSA 10, that card can easily, easily be over six, seven hundred dollars in a couple of months. So definitely one of my favorite buys in the hobby right now. Do you want to go to my other deep cut or do you want to go to yours? Yeah, let's hop to let's hop over to the world of soccer, shall we? All right. So my guy right now that I am really excited about is a guy that I would imagine that none of you have heard of, which is what this deep cuts is about. This is this guy is named Victor, and I am going. I hope I pronounce it right because it's Gakarez, but it, he is a Swedish striker, um, um, and he is currently playing in the Portuguese league. After almost leading Coventry to the Premier League title or to the Premier League playoff title, they lost to Luton Town last um, last uh, May to put Luton up into the Premier League. So easily, this guy could have been a Premier League striker this year had he won that game. But Coventry ended up losing that game, and they he so, they sold him. He was arguably the best player in the championship last year. He moves to Sporting, which is in Portugal. And they're, they're near the Portuguese top. He's also going to be in Europa this league or this year, and he is potentially worth a hundred million dollar transfer this summer. He is on Arsenal's list. He's on Tottenham's list. He's on a lot of these big uh, teams' lists because you know what they love? They love goal scorers. And this guy is a Swedish striker who loves to score goals. You know who I've heard of Swedish strikers before that love to score goals? Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Uh, Sweden has been begging for another guy to call their own, and uh, Victor definitely can do it all. He can hold up play. He can bounce it inside. He's six four, so he can he can score with headers. He has great pace. He can hold up the ball. He can play in a lot of different ways, which is how the Premier League loves to have their strikers because they play different uh, systems week in and week out. He can play all over the field and do everything. He's huge. He's twenty four years old. He is not yet in his prime. Um, and he's got great technique with his feet. He has proven it this season that he can do a bit of everything in a top flight league in Portugal. He is uh, playing in Europa. And the card that I love from him is this card right here. This is actually, you cannot buy these because I bought these this morning. So, uh, you know, go cry to your mamas or something, but these are mine. But this is the card that I love. It is the, uh, the Victor, um, <laughs> the, his name is, the pronunciation is, let's see. Uh, Gokarez, which G Y O K E R S. It's his rookie card from number 40, 479 Sporting Tops Total Football. 
And this is a got the rookie card logo here. We see it right here. And there's also numbered parallels of this card as well. And so if you'd like to go a little bit deeper and try to get a little bit higher on the return scale, um, I was able to get these for about twelve and a half dollars a piece. Now, some of his numbered cards are going for much different, but he is um, a top target this this summer for a lot of those big teams that are going to be in Champions League sides. And he is going to be in a different jersey soon. And we know that that drives sales. I love it. Yeah, uh, I'm not I'm never one to uh, be afraid to admit when I'm uneducated and I'm just not very educated when it comes to soccer. It's hard for me to keep up with. So anytime that Lefty McKee opens his mouth, referring to soccer, pitch and plays, uh, guys like Victor uh, that, we're, that we're talking about today, I'm always excited. Usually it means there's a listen back coming from my end to make sure I get all the information with some with some jotting down some notes. So great stuff there, Lefty. I'll definitely uh, have my eyes peeled for Victor and seeing how things pan out for him, seeing where some deals uh, and steals can be found there. Yeah, I think my last point on Victor real quick is – Last year, or like at the end of last year in 2023, we talked about Javi Simons, we talked about Hoyland, um, and then I think we talked about another player that I had on one of our 1K Budget Builders segments. Both Javi and Hoyland have had massive card rises. I've ended up selling a Hoyland card for double what I bought it for. So th there were big wins here. Javi Simons has gotten more attention as well, and I believe he will continue to get more attention. But on the list that we found those two guys on was the biggest increases in the last six months in transfer um, hype and transfer like uh, potential like dollar amount uh transfer budget potentials whatever i think what's the word i'm looking for here uh i mean i'm, I'm following you so i think market value market value market is value. what i'm looking for so he is number three actually on the list right now on behind names like jude bellingham and yamal from a 16 year old from barcelona so he is above some good names as well. And we still have Javi Simons number 10 on this list as well. So he has gone above and beyond some of the other guys um, that we expected to be up there. And so to have number three in a Portuguese league from a 25-year-old Swedish striker, those are three things he has against him to not have him high up this list. He's not from a premier uh, country. He's not at a premier club right now. This guy still is third amongst all these players with a 323% rise in the last uh, or since July 1st, 2023. This guy is coming for blood and I love his makeup. Don't miss out. I love it. Great stuff from Lefty McKee there. Again, I will definitely be listening back and jotting down some notes uh, because I use Lefty as my sole source of soccer information essentially. So there we go. <clears throat> Good stuff. All right, let me hop into mine real quick. Um, of course, I'm going to cover basketball, but I'm going to start actually. Uh, no, yeah, we'll start with my football pick here. Um, a guy that myself and I know Paul Hickey likes as well uh, is Drake London, wideout Drake London, his 2022 Contenders Rookie Ticket Auto in PSA 10. Uh, it's only down 6% over the last 60 days. However, uh, the last two sales are just $80 and $61, uh, respectively. Um, here's why I like this card. One, he's got a ton of talent. He's got the big wideout makeout or makeup. Um, and he, I expect the Falcons will probably be looking to add QB talent this offseason, which essentially could create some hype around that team. I think they've got some interesting talent on the team. They just kind of need uh, someone to be direct in the offense, right, steering the ship. So um, Drake London had nearly 70 catches and over 900 yards last season with Desmond Ritter and Taylor Heineke throwing him the ball. So uh, I think that's a testament to the kind of receiver that he can be. He's a big physical receiver. Uh, I think this is the right card to buy to see upside. Given that it is his continuous rookie ticket auto, it's already graded in PSA 10. Uh, and I think it's the right time to buy with how cheap it is right now. Yeah, I expect Kirk Cousins to be throwing him the ball this year. Um, that's the prediction that I'm going to make is that Kirk Cousins is going to be in Atlanta. Um, and I think there was a lot of smoke around that to potentially happen today. I don't think it happened as far as I saw um, that it did not happen with him going over there. Oh, it but did happen today. It did. It did? Yeah, he went to the Falcons. Four years, 180 mil. I missed Oh, it. let's freaking go. Come on. Come on, hey. Kirky. Now I like the card even more. Let's go. So Drake London, even more excited. We've got breaking news here. Four hours late. Five hours late breaking news, baby. Let's go.
<laughs> Come on. If that's not what you want here at the Lefty Card Show, we're taking you five hours late into some breaking news. We got Kirk Cousins making a big move over to Atlanta uh, that Ritter is not going to be throwing Lon uh, London the ball. You are going to have a good, dare I say, elite quarterback throwing him the ball. Um, you know, he's at least in that top echelon of top uh, pass throwers in the National Football League. He's got the arm for it. I I bet he will be able to facilitate more options and to get Kyle Pitts the ball as well. Kyle Pitts, we've seen not be able to catch the ball that much because they haven't put him in the offense. This uh, this team is going to be looking for new options, and I would imagine that a lot of these guys will have um, the best season of their Falcons career in 2024. Yeah, good breakdown there. I think if you can buy this card for less than $100 right now, already graded in PSA 10, like flag plant, you're going to make money on it. That's just yeah. my personal opinion. At some time throughout the year, uh, like you're saying, uh, a, an established quarterback that obviously can sling it uh, with a with a physical whiteout is typically a good a good combination in there. Um, so excited to see. Shout out to shout out to you for bringing up uh, that you thought Kirk was going there because I pulled it up and I was like, sure enough, he's there. So <laughs> Sure enough. <laughs> there. Uh, let's hit on my basketball pick real quick. Um, it's actually someone that we talked about selling a couple of months ago, and that is Kobe White, um, who essentially took advantage of all the injuries on the Bulls roster. Uh, you know, he had a lackluster 2022-2023 season where he averaged less than 10 points per game. But like I mentioned, he's capitalized on those injuries, uh, and he's having a career year right now, scoring just under 20 points a game, shooting 46% from the field and 39% from three. Uh, he's got two 30-point games in his last 10 games. And reminding people, Lefty, why he used to be a hobby darling. Uh, his prices are so yeah. much cheaper now than they were. 2019 Prism Silver and PSA 10 is down 50% over the last 60 days. Last sales, this is crazy to me, $34 and $51. And that was three different times or three different prints for that $51. Uh, with Tamar DeRozan kind of aging, Zach Levine lefty. It seems like he's either injured or on the trade block at all times. Uh, and Lonzo, obviously, his future still in question if he's ever even going to play basketball again. I know he got cleared very recently to return to basketball activity. However, we don't know how is how that's going to hold up there. I think Kobe could either cement himself as a top scoring threat for Chicago, or if they decide to stay with their veteran leadership, uh, he could be moved to a contender, which would be a great sell market there as well. I think if you can buy this card for less than fifty bucks in a PSA ten, um, Kobe White has the bright future. I believe that. Yeah, there's plenty on auction right now as well, which is good. Uh, that's not like what Drake London and some of these other cards we have. There, this card is available and liquid. There is over a thousand of these, almost two thousand of these available. But if so, the past 365 data that we see on market movers right here is is looking good. Like it's it's down. Uh, let's see, it's down. Oh, come on. It's down 100. So it's at 120%. And in January, it made a $104 sale. So, you know, you, you've got a lot of margin here. But then if we click on all time data, this is so crazy. This all time data chart, of course, it was in 2020 when Mark when the market was booming. But this card sold for over $1,000 18 times. And now you can get into it at 50 bucks. That's is that's a that's a good return, my friend. And uh, when we talk about Zion falling from grace, Kobe White definitely fell from Harley Darving. Har Har little Harvey. What am I saying? Hobby darling, baby. Hobby darling. Thanks. <laughs> that's a tongue twister. Yeah, I was going on. You know, like. Harvey Quinn there for a second, another nerd alert. Oh my goodness. Anyway, so uh, I do like this pick here, and for, to be able to get it for so cheap, and there's and there's liquidity out there. There are other cards out there, possibly on eBay right now that you can sn uh, snag. So, where else can you get these cards, Connor? How about whatnot? Get fifteen dollars on a whatnot by joining through whatnot.sportscardstrategyshow.com. We love whatnot. We do some uh, some breaks and some card sales there as well. The no off season brand loves. Uh, being able to move cards and buy cards at good auction prices. And when you're up at 3 a.m. and your head is pounding because you've just spent a, a rager on the night before the golf course like Connor having to spend a couple of days in bed, you know what you can do? You can go buy some whatnot cards. So go get some whatnot, get 15% off or $15 on whatnot by joining through the whatnot.com. Sorry, whatnot.sportscardstrategy.com. Go ahead and get your cards moving. All right. The last thing that I would love to go through in this show is another segment that I'm going to bring to the table. We've got deep cuts that we've gone through. We've caught up on everything uh, lefty cards related over the last couple of months in a regular intro, and we will be 
uh, bringing consistent, uh, um, what do you call them, segments to our Lefty Card Show. But another segment that I'm introducing today is what I'm calling the Reserve Driver. So the reserve drivers are cards that we are sitting on and then why we are sitting on them. Shout out to my man, Buffalo Boone, for helping me put this segment together. But for Connor today, uh, for Connor and everyone else not versed in F1, this segment comes from a knowledge of F1. It's not F1 cards, but it is a concept that is in F1. We have reserve drivers in F1, and, and a team will put a reserve driver as number three as their in-case-of-emergency driver. And so they will have him, but a lot of cases, it had they, they put that reserve driver in there so not another team can have them. And I think that is the thing that I want to talk about here. Basically, do you have a card that you are acquiring right now in the case that you would like to be holding this card in your reserves for when it pops off and you don't want somebody else to be winning with that profit other than you? It's like this language. So think of the reserve drivers for now or a relief pitcher or a guy, the top prospect, something like that. We are teasing F1 talk, Rusty Amagart. That will be something that we talk about on this channel and on this show. Not today. But other than this segment, reserve drivers are what we're going with. So what do you got for me, Connor? That's a pretty good little ad lib there, Lefty. I think I love the idea of the segment. So shout out to you and shout out to Boone. I think someone else that would love the segment real quick. I'm a shameless plug to our guy, Duke Diddy, one time dots. And he'd have a blast with this segment. Uh, and you can get 10% off any purchase at graybos.co by using the promo code strategy 2023. Just want to give a reminder. Come on. Guys at Grey Bows. I love those guys. Meeting them. Uh, and some of the team in person was fantastic. So real quick, that's 10% off any purchase at graybos.co by using the promo code strategy 2023. My reserve lefty, and I don't know, like we work, we work on a live document, right? So we can see each other working on it if we're in it at once. And like, I had a different name in here originally, and I didn't know if you could, if you saw me doing it, but I was thinking he's going to be disappointed if I come with this name. Like, I just knew you were going to be disappointed, right? So the original name was going to be Darius Garland, but anyone that knows me knows I say his name all the time because he's so <laughs> cheap and I think he has such high upside. But I was like, you know what? I preached enough about him. I need to move in a different direction. I stayed with basketball, of course, but I went with Scotty Barnes, 2021 Prism Silver PSA 10. He's coming off uh, an all star appearance. He's second in the Raptors on points, rebounds, and assists. That's 19.9 points per game, over eight rebounds, and over six assists per game. And if you were curious, he's second in points to a new addition, RJ Barrett, and he's second in assists to a new addition, Emmanuel Quickly. So he was first in all three of those categories. Um, this is a guy that has improved each year. He's 6'7", 240, well-rounded and versatile. Kind of reminds me of like a slower LeBron James, to be completely honest with you, in terms of the makeup, uh, not necessarily potentially the play style. Um, but you can pick up this Prism Silver right now for around 150 bucks, And if you can hold it for a year or two, as the current gen stars kind of fade out and the next gen arrives, you know, obviously we've got Luca, we've got SGA, we've got Ant-Man, we've got Halliburton. We've got all those guys that everyone's like, dang, they're up next. I think Scotty is someone that's going to come in and surprise a lot of people. I think this $150 card in a couple of years is going to be worth a whole lot more than it is right now. Curious your thoughts on Scotty Barnes. Scotty Barnes. We've talked about him, at, uh, you know, every once in a while on this show, and it always comes back to me about him being a Raptors player. And it's like, if Scotty Barnes leaves, I'm in. If he's continually in Toronto, I'm worried about it. And I, that's why I'm unfortunately, like, my guy uh, quickly ended up going to the one team that I'm worried about their investment portfolio. Uh, quickly, uh, PSA 10s are still going around $79, and I bought in on them at, like, 25 So I'm still making money on quickly, even though I could have made more money had he made the playoffs with the Knicks. But I do like Scotty Barnes. I like the way he plays. I like his dominance. I just don't think he's going to be on the Raptors long term. And then at that point, I think that will be his sell marker when he's not on the Toronto Raptors. So if you're risk averse enough to go buy him right now and get a reserve driver, that's the exact point of this segment is to be when this card pops off, you're going to want to be the one who has it. And Scotty Barnes is that guy. So my reserve driver for 2024, I just did this on the fly because Rusty got so excited about F1 talk. I, I love it. I knew you were going to. I knew you were going to love it. I, I'm going to go into Oliver Behrman. He's a guy that that sat into the Ferrari seat for Carlos Sainz this week as Carlos Sainz had an emergency appendectomy, and he got his first start in a Ferrari car last week. 
And uh, it, with the going by, you saw that uh, Oliver definitely knew how to drive this Ferrari car. You had him placing P8 um, in this in this Grand Prix, and he looked like a guy who was ready to take the uh, the lead. Sometimes these guys take F1, they get into F1, and they've, they've done well in F2 and F3. They get into an F1 scene, and they don't know how to take the reins. Behrman definitely looked like he was capable of driving in a car that was at the top of the game. And so I expect him to be potentially in a Haas, a Williams, a uh, a, a, a kick, Sauber, whatever the heck that their booger green car is called now. Um, I expect Oliver Behrman to be in F1 next year, not in a Ferrari car because Lewis Hamilton and Charles Leclerc are going to be there, but I do expect Oliver Behrman to be in F1 soon. So he is my reserve driver if you do want to go buy some F1 cards. But I would say do not buy him right now because he literally just did. Nobody knew of him last week, and now everyone knows about him. So give it a while. Give it a little bit of a month or so for people to forget who Oliver Behrman is and then go back out and buy the Englishman um, because he will be in the F1 circuit, I bet, in 2025. But, Connor, the last thing we need to do here is talk about CSG cards. Or C, sorry. <laughs> I botched this. CGC cards. Um, are you ready to start grading your cards? CGC cards is the perfect place to slab your favorite sports cards. From their crystal clear holders to the affordable price, CGC Cards is the perfect stop for grading cards. Go to cgccards.com to start grading today. And we want to have you guys understand that this is for um, what we talk about is like reserve cards. CGC does a great job. Connor did a, uh, a, a walkthrough tour with them and was completely impressed for what they had at their disposal. Um, it's not going to have the same value as a PSA, and we're not trying to tell you to go invest in the top-level CGC cards, but they are a good slab and have a good technology moving forward. So as our reserve drivers have come into pit, if you will, uh, we are going to come in and pit for the night as well. The show number one of Lefty Cards with Connor Barnett is in the books, ladies and gentlemen. The last thing that I want to say is how much I loved the support coming in strong from all of the sports card strategy show peeps that I used to sit on with weekly. Um, I loved having you on the show, Rusty. We have uh, all sorts of Boone, Janelle. We even had Chad in here. My grandma, Sandy Hughes, watched it. We got Ozzy in here. So uh, Barry Sif. Uh, just all these people, I want to extend my love to you, uh, Jeff Ulrich. Uh, there's just so many people that came to support what I do for just a hobby. And I appreciate the fact that you guys have followed along and kept with me as I took some time away from the show to uh, just get healthy and get go through a lot of stuff and then recreate, go into the lab and come back. I really appreciate all you guys being here. Connor, I appreciate you've had a long day and I know you're going to probably go back and crash and get up and do it all again tomorrow. So thanks for being here with me. Um, my mom says, great show. Thanks, mom. Uh, glad you watched. And Mama uh, McKee. Mama Let's McKee. Go. Dude, we have my grandma and my mom come. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Gets me hype. Uh, Man, my, yeah, I had a great time being here, Lefty, real quick. I just wanted to – sorry to cut you off like that. No, uh, fantastic time being here. Um, I'm you know, I'm, I'm excited to have you back on air. And um, I know that uh, obviously this is the first episode, but we are you will be taking a small hiatus um, as you're doing some traveling, just so yeah. the audience is aware. When are we picking back up with Lefty Cards? Um, my next episode is actually next Monday. I will be back for two strong okay. ones uh, this Monday, next Monday, and then I will be in Albania over the next couple of weeks uh, at, for some work trips. And we just love having uh, our real lives along with our card lives. And so sometimes those intersect. Um, and for the next couple of weeks, I will be in Albania uh, doing some crazy stuff. But uh, I will be back with you soon. I'm going to go scout Victor while I'm out there. Uh <laughs> See what other Albanian youth products I can be signing some tops autographs for. Uh, but we love having it. 
and we'll be back soon. So thanks for coming out strong. My dad is also going to meet us at the Dallas show, the Dallas show where Connor, hey. Paul, and I will be. Uh, maybe Sandy will come out and maybe she'll come out and show her face. So it'll be fun at the Dallas card show in May. Um, Connor, if you have the dates up, you can go ahead and mention those. But I'm super excited to be with Texas Roadshow um, at the Dallas Card Show in May, I believe is the 16th, maybe? That is correct, potentially. <laughs> I believe it's the 16th, people, but yeah, yeah, it looks like the 16th of May. I think I just haven't accepted a, a calendar request right now, but yeah, excited. Hopefully, I get to meet uh, some more of the McKee family. Uh, I know that anyone like Lefty's got some great fans, so looking forward to it. Dude, that's the hometown for me, so I love being able to go to the Dallas Card Show. Um, for those of you that are uh, are loving what we're doing here, continue to subscribe on Twitch, continue to follow us on YouTube, continue to listen to us on Spotify. We love having you. Thanks for supporting NoOffSeason.com and the Sports Card Strategy Show Network. Lefty Cards, number one episode in the books, ladies and gentlemen. And with that, let's feed some ducks, Connor. Let's feed some ducks. Come on. Yeah. Yeah.